this lecture we'll examine circuits or circuit segments that consist of a single pair of nodes. We'll explain the important concept of current division and show how parallel combinations of resistors can be reduced to a single resistance. We'll also show how parallel combinations of current sources can be reduced to a single current source and we'll show how these simplifications can be used to solve for unknown quantities in simple circuits. Well, I'd like to begin by looking at a parallel combination of two resistors with resistances equal to R1 and R2, and I'd like to answer two questions about this circuit segment. First, if the current flowing through the parallel combination is I of t, I'd like to determine how much of that current flows through each of these resistors. That is, I'd like to know what is the value for I1 and what is the value for I2. Second, I'd like to know if I could replace the two resistors with a single resistor and still retain the same voltage between the two nodes. So if the voltage from this node to this node is V of t, I'd like to know if I could put a single resistor between those two nodes with some resistance R so that if I have the same current I of t flowing through that resistor I'd have the same voltage V of t across it. Well to answer these questions I'll need two equations. The first is from Kirchhoff's current law and simply shows that the current I of t is equal to the sum of the two currents that leave this node. So I'll write that as I of t is equal to I1 plus I2. Now the second is from Ohm's law and this just shows that this voltage across R1 or across R2, resistor R2, is equal to the current times the resistance. So I'll write that as V of t is equal to I1 times R1. So that's the voltage across this resistor, but it's also equal to the voltage across this resistor and that'll be I2 times R2. So from this equation I could write I1 as I2 times R2 over R1 or I could write I2 as I1 times R1 divided by R2. Now let's combine these two equations by using one of those substitutions. In particular I'll replace I2 with I1 times R1 divided by R2. If I do that, then I will write I2 as I1 of t times R1 divided by R2. So I'll rewrite that as I1 of t times 1 plus R1 over R2 so that's equal to I1 times R1 plus R2 divided by R2. So we'll just write this value of 1 as R2 over R2 and then add these two. So that allows me to conclude so this is I of t is equal to I1 times R1 plus R2 over R2 so that tells me that I1 is the original current I of t 
which flows through both of the resistors times the reciprocal of this which would be R2 times R1 plus R2. Alright, so if IT is I1 times R1 plus R2 over R2, then I1 is IT times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now if we went through this same procedure and replaced I1 with I2 times R2 over R1, what we'd find is I2 is I of T times the ratio of R1 times R1 plus R2. Now these two relationships are known as the current division relationship and let's see what they tell us. This first expression tells us that the current that flows through the resistor with resistance R1 is equal to the total current times a ratio and this ratio is the resistance in the other resistor divided by the sum or the total resistance. Likewise the current that flows through the second resistor is the total current times the resistance of the other resistor divided by the sum of the two resistances. So when we want to use the current division to find a particular current it's the total current times the proportion of the resistance that is in the other resistor relative to the total resistance for the two. All right, well, let's use these relationships and see if we can write an expression for the voltage and figure out what this equivalent resistance might be. So this voltage, V of T, is I1 times R1 or I2 times R2 and if we use these expressions doesn't matter which one what we'll find is that is equal to I of T times the ratio of R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 and this quantity evidently is the equivalent resistance. So we know that this voltage is this current times this resistance and so a V of T is the current times some quantity here which is equal to that resistance. So the equivalent resistance of two resistors in parallel is found by taking the product of the two resistances and dividing by the sum of the two resistances. And that's a very important relationship that we'll use frequently if we want to convert uh, pairs of parallel resistors into a single resistor. Well if we have two current sources connected in parallel and we'd like to replace those with a single current source we could do that and this is really just an application of Kirchhoff's current law. That is if we want to know the current that flows in this direction well that would be I1 minus I2 if we have I1 reference direction left to right and I2 reference direction right to left. So I could draw this equivalent current source between these node pairs going in that direction and that would be I1 minus I2 in this particular case or I could draw it with a reference direction in the opposite direction and that might be I2 minus I1. So if we want to combine two current sources that are in parallel it really is just an application of Kirchhoff's current law. So if we want to replace that with a current flowing left to right, then that would be I1, the current component flowing left to right, in this case minus I2 because that current's flowing right to left. If we wanted to replace it with a current source flowing right to left, then it would be I2 minus I1. 
Well, here's a circuit with a single pair of nodes that has three current sources and three resistors, all connected in parallel. Now, the top node is this combination of points. Since they're all connected together, they make up one node. So every element is connected to that node. And the bottom node is this combination of points. And there, every element is also connected to this node. Now because every element is connected in parallel between those two nodes, we can use the principles we just discussed to simplify this circuit. Now suppose, for instance, that we wanted to find the voltage between the two nodes in the circuit. So I'll label that voltage as V of t. Now one way to do that would be to find the current through any of these resistors and then use Ohm's law. So for instance, if we label this current through the 5 kilo ohm resistor as I of t, then this voltage would be I of t times 5 kilo ohms. So let's redraw this circuit like this. What we're going to do is combine all of the current sources into one current source flowing from the bottom node to the top node. We'll leave the 5 kilo ohm resistor because that's the resistor that we want to solve for the current through. And then we'll take all of the other resistors, namely the 10 kilo ohm resistor and the 8 kilo ohm resistor, and we'll combine those into some equivalent resistance. So what we'll have here is a 5 kilo ohm resistor. We'll still have this current flowing through that resistor that we've labeled as I of t. Now the current flowing in this direction, well we first combine this current source with this current source and that would be a 12 milliamp current source flowing upward. And then we could combine that one with this current source, which would subtract 4 milliamps because it flows from the top to the bottom. So that would leave us with 8 milliamps. Now this resistance is due to the parallel combination of these two resistors, and that's the product of their resistances divided by their sum, which is 40 ninths, 40 divided by 9, thousand ohms or kilo ohms. Now to solve for this current then, we can use the current division relationship and solve for I of t as the current that flows through this parallel combination, which is 8 milliamps. So that would be 8 milliamps times the ratio of the other resistance, which is 40 ninths, kilo ohms, divided by the sum of these two, which would be 5 kilo ohms plus 40 ninths kilo ohms, which would be, we'll write this as 5 plus 40 over 9 kilo ohms. So the kilo ohms will cancel and this will reduce to 64 over 17 milliamps. So now that we found the current through the 5 kilo ohm resistor, we can use Ohm's law as we've written it here and we can solve for that voltage. V of t is 64 over 17 milliamps times 5 kilo ohms, which is 320 
seventeenths volts or about 18.8 .8 volts.